Hey, what's up, Zach here. And no, that title was not clickbait. These have been some of the most comfortable shoes, running or otherwise, that I've put on my foot this year. They're not without their pros and cons, and they're definitely not for everybody. However, there are some really interesting and niche use cases for these shoes, and some technology in these that I really think that some other companies do need to be paying attention to. And thanks to Lotto for sending me a pre-release version of these to check out early. Remember, this video is not sponsored. All opinions are my own, and no one's gonna see this before you do. So here we go. Now Lotto has named their new running shoe the Lotto Velada Hyper Pulse 100, which yeah, is a mouthful. And Velada in Italian means sprint. And the other meaning of it is like the final sprint or the final push, which I thought was pretty interesting. And Lotto has really touted their midsole technology, not only in their running shoes, but in their court shoes. And it is fascinating in the technology, I think is showing us where the future of running and court shoes is going. However, I think the real unsung hero in this shoe that doesn't get talked about even by Lotto a lot is the uppers. What I mean by that is the uppers are a single layer polyester mesh. It doesn't sound like anything special. However, it's the orientation of the uppers that's really interesting. On the inside, it's really open wide breathing channels. However, on the outside, it closes in and the channels get smaller. However, they're more plentiful, so there are more of them. So the air has an easy way to flow out. So you're getting all the hot air, the hottest air of your foot, and that's able to escape really quickly. However, the shoe still retains a lot of strength because on the outside of the shoe, there are all these wide open channels. It also is able to then move with your foot a lot easier and accept more foot types. So the shoe stays really breezy and really light, but also exchanges heat just phenomenally well. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, you can really see that material at work. Now this does have a diamond toe drag guard, which isn't all that bulky. It provides some support. I think it's just more to protect your toes. However, that polyester material did not give on the Dremel. The Dremel just couldn't bite through it. And the last thing I'll say about the uppers, which I think will be more important to the more hardcore runners watching this video, is how reinforced the lace line is. It is double reinforced on the outside as well as on the inside. It is also integrated here along your midfoot, so you do get a tremendous tie down. The tongue is also a lot thicker than it looks. It is double bunted padding. So the lockdown on these for a more minimalist upper is really good. Now getting into the midsole teardown, this is where the shoe really takes a fork in the road if you're gonna like it or not. Now the midsole is a double layer of foam. There is an EVA carrier collar going all the way around. That's the blue foam. You can actually see it here up in the toe cap. That's a little bit of a stronger, more stiff foam material. But then the bulk of the midsole, which you can see here on the teardown, is this serrated EVA and ETPU blend. Now what I really like about this is these serrations really give a lot of energy absorption. So when you push down on them, they actually bend and then they want to snap back up. So that's where the hyper pulse comes from in their marketing. And that white hyper pulse foam layer is really where I think the buying decision comes down to. Remember, there is no shank in these shoes. So they definitely do not have the torsional support of a shoe with a rigid polypropylene or carbon fiber shank. However, because that hyper pulse ETPU and EVA foam is so strong and so responsive, I mean, if you just look at the jump height test, they got 33 centimeters of jump height in a minimalist shoe with no shank, which is pretty darn good. Plus you have that EVA layer going around the shoe, which is really stiff foam. So if you're a lighter runner with a little bit more of a fluid strike, these shoes are gonna give you all the benefits of a more maximalist shoe. However, with the feeling of a more minimalist shoe, a little bit more of a lighter shoe, they do kind of have the best of both worlds for those runners. However, if you are a heavier runner, that's where I think you're gonna have to augment these shoes probably with an orthotic, just to kind of get a little bit more rigidity under your foot so that over time you don't push down through that foam. And getting into the outsole, I kind of had some doubt about it when I took it out of the box. However, I was more pleasantly surprised when I took it out. The forefoot is a little bit of a softer rubber compound, basically in just kind of block patterns around here with break points here for pretty fluid gait. Now, the front foam and the back foam are pretty different. That back foam, the durometer, or the measure of its hardness, comes in at 13.5, which is pretty medium to hard rubber compound. However, the forefoot is only 7.5, which is a pretty soft rubber compound. However, when I went and looked up this shoe online, it did say that the forefoot was designed like like that to be tackier and softer for more feel. And then the rear foot was meant to withstand more strikes. So that was intentional. You just gotta remember on the forefoot, if you are taking these on really jagged or more kind of gritty asphalt, you are gonna start to wear through these patterns here. As you can see, I have just by my running. However, on the back, really no damage. So that's kind of the profile you're gonna have to expect with this shoe. But getting into the fit of the Veladas, this is where I think for wide footers, they really shine. Even in your standard size on a wide foot 2E, you can just go true to size. And 
And even if you are above a 2E and you want one to one, you still can go your true size. If you want more room, then you put an orth bulky orthotic in there. You can go up that half size. If you are a medium foot and wear an orthotic, I think you probably can just go standard size. However, if you do want more of a one to one fit for a medium or narrow, probably would be going down that half size knees just because those uppers just expand so well and they give so much room, especially in the midfoot. And speaking of expandability, these will fit a flat neutral and high arch. I will just say, if you are somebody with a very high arch, I probably would be putting an orthotic in these just so you're not bottoming out the forefoot. If you are somebody with an incredibly flat foot, because the inside of these shoes do expand so well, I probably would put a more rigid orthotic in there just to stress shield that foam. It's gonna feel phenomenal at first, but I think over over time, putting an orthotic in these will really extend the life of them for you. And if you're a neutral arch, yeah, they're just gonna fit great. But as someone that reviews a lot of different shoes for a lot of different sports, I actually found the best use case and my favorite use of the Veladas was as a recovery shoe. I found like after doing a long basketball review or playing tennis for a while and then going to play pickleball, I was really reaching for these afterwards as more of a recovery shoe, just because the uppers are so accepting, they're so comfortable, they breathe so well, the midsole is so comfortable, just for kind of kicking around kind of after you've been in a closed shoe and going back and forth and jumping back and forth side to side. So I think if you're looking for a good recovery shoe to throw in your bag for after a game or a match, I, I think these are the best on the market right now for that, besides maybe like a sandal, like the Hoka One One or a sandal. And so putting all that together, you know, if you look at the best running styles for these, I do think a very fluid, efficient midfoot striking gait is the best pattern on these shoes. Heel strikers are gonna like these too. Forefoot strikers, I think if you have a well-contoured orthotic or you like a more minimalist shoe are going to like it. However, if you are someone that has a pretty hard forefoot strike, like I said, throw that orthotic in there. And I think you'll be okay. However, the shoe just on it its own for a four foot striker, I think needs augmented. So I definitely think if you have in a more efficient gait cycle, if you've put in the hard miles, no pun intended, really grooving in your running style and getting your muscles used to long mileage, then these shoes are almost like a reward for you because they are so efficient, they are so light and airy feeling, and they do give enough support for a shoe that is a little bit more minimalist. If you are somebody, maybe as a beginner runner, or just has a really heavy heel strike, like I do, you will need an orthotic in these to feel comfortable. But if you are someone that wants something, basically is gonna get out of your way, kind of just feel like an extension of your leg, I feel like these are kind of a present at the end of a long road of grooving your gait cycle. And I really think that's the name of the game, fluidity and efficiency. If you're more of an intermediate to advanced runner, looking for a shoe that feels basically like a second skin, and I think you are going to absolutely love these. If you're somebody, like I said, with a little bit more of a heavy strike, or someone that just needs a little bit more bulk under these, you are going to want to make sure that you do have something stress shielding that shoe so that you can still take advantage of the comfort of the shoe, but also give it a little more longevity. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you looking to pick up a pair of more minimalist shoes like the Veladas? Or are you going more toward the super shoe or more maximalist category? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see some of the other brand new running shoes of 2022, make sure you click in this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. We'll see you in the next video.